Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivors. Please stay for this video. I'm going to be talking about what happened with the actor Alec Baldwin and how he tragically killed a person, injured someone else. And please stay for this video because I'm going to be explaining a bunch of things that probably you don't know or fully understand. That is most commonly the case, even with people that think they know about firearms. I was just reading on the Daily Mail, which you may think, okay, Daily Mail is crap, sure, but it's a pretty big media outlet. And the article they have is such full of bullshit and holes and lack of knowledge that's just scary and I'm sure there's a bunch of reporters talking about this that have no freaking idea about how guns work and the different kind of of cartridges and rounds that you have right so stick around for this you know believe me it's important to us to be safe out there and know what you're doing and first you need to understand the different uh, type of 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 rounds that you have. What is a dummy round? What's a blank firing gun? What's a live ammunition? This is the typical live ammunition, right? This is a nine millimeter as uh, as common as it gets and you have a projectile, right? It's gonna be the, the, the thing actually firing and you know, going at very high speed down the barrel. You have a powder inside the case, right? And you have uh, primer that's gonna be the one where the firing pin hits and that's gonna be igniting the powder on the inside the powder is gonna be going from a solid state to a gas state in a very violent manner and that's gonna be creating a huge amount of pressure that's gonna be pushing this projectile at very high speed down the barrel and down range and this is the thing that's gonna be you know that's basically how guns work that's basically how all cartridges work right so what's a different type of, of rounds that you have what's a, a dummy round a dummy round would be something like this it's a it's a piece of, of material it could be aluminium plastic but it's, a, um, it's something that's a solid piece that is intended to look and be manipulated like an actual round but there's no powder involved there's no primer there's nothing here that could actually fire anything this is usually used for example for for practice for drills for instruction if you're going to be teaching a, a, a bunch of people how to load magazines ideally you will have a bunch of dummy rounds for them to practice with if for example this is what i use for my bolt action rifle so as to practice you know manipulating that bolt so as to get fast and 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 skilled with that but in a safe manner right and here you have um, a snap cap. This looks very, usually these are gonna be of a very bright color, usually orange, red, something very distinctive and you know, something that you can know it's, it's, it's something completely different from a, an actual live round. Then you have these snap caps that are very similar, but these are intended to actually take the impact of a firing pin. So these you will probably would not use, you know, pull the trigger and drop the, the firing pin on them. You will just be manipulating it. I mean, you could do it and it's not going to be doing anything, you know, nothing too bad. It's going to be a little dimple there. But these are specifically intended so as to have the firing pin hit that piece of brass there and transfer that energy to this internal spring. This is the best way of dry firing so as to protect your gun the most. Most modern firearms can be safely fired, dry fired without any kind of dummy round on the inside and you're not going to be damaging it. Now, if you want to be extra careful, if you're going to be doing this for a very long time, you know, thousands and thousands of times, ideally you would be using snap caps. Especially with some of the older shotguns that are not intended to be dry fired at all, you could damage those very very quickly with just a few shots dry firing some of those older shotguns they're not intended to be dry fired and that's why you usually see those older double barrel shotguns especially the fancier ones with snap caps 12 gauge snap caps pretty much the same thing so as to discharge you know that uh, relieve those springs and do it so in a safe manner then you have the typical um, um, you know, the, 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 the rounds that are not going to be firing any kind of projectile, your blank rounds, right? Those are still rounds that you have powder on the inside, you have a primer there, but you don't have any kind of rounds. Are blank rounds safe? And no, no, they're, they're not safe. You're still discharging a firearm, even though there's no projectile going down range. You're still discharging something that creates a lot of pressure. These are used for a bunch of different uh, things. You will find some of these blank fired guns that are gonna be used for signaling, scaring away animals, you know, races. You typically see, you know, so for sport for sporting events, you see a, a little blank revolver fires. Usually they will have like a hole, the barrel is, is, is solid 
solid and they have a hole on top so as to not even have that um, powder burning directly in front of the barrel. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They have the, the hole on top, depends on the model. But these are not intended to fire any type of projectile. This does not mean that they are safe, right? What, um, what you see these used also, for example, is for uh, uh, nail guns, nail guns in, in, in 22 blank rounds. Those blank rounds in 22 are intended to push a nail at very high speed and you know use that as a nail gun. You will go bop, bop, bop with that nail gun. This is in nine millimeter. You also see these, uh, especially this one in nine millimeter is intended for slaughtering um, um, game, you know, for, for, for killing uh, cattle, right? For, for slaughtering livestock, you have like a, a, a device that is you know, like a piece of tube and it has like a big old trigger that you press with your entire hand. You unscrew it, you put one of these 9mm blanks and it has a captive piston that's going to be flying at very high speed and it can either stun the animal or kill the animal. If it has like a mushroom shape on top, it's going to be stunning the animal. It's going to be unconscious because of how hard it hits it. Keep that in mind. It is you know, either killing a cow because someone, some of these are just a, a, a cylinder that just goes through the skull and kills the animal. So either stunning it or killing it, it is still achieved with a blank round. Imagine the amount of pressure and energy involved that is able to kill a full grown cow. It's a lot, right? This is pretty much the same thing, but it has like a little plastic piece on top and you may be wondering, oh, that goes flying at very high speed. Yeah, but you know, it's very thin and it should be, I mean, it's intended to be a lot safer than actually firing a, a projectile. But this, yeah, the, some pieces of these could fly. The idea with these blanks is that they have a, a powder less of it and powder that burns faster so as to not have the powder burning on the outside. Uh, trying to keep it as safe as possible, but it doesn't mean that you should ignore the safety rules. This, these are the safety rules that I explained in, in street survival skills. Guys, this is hugely important and people that think they know about guns, if they haven't got proper firearms instruction, they usually screw this, these things up. When I wrote the book Street Survival Skills, the first thing I explained here in terms of firearms, the first thing I mentioned was the firearm safety rules. The famous rules of all guns are all loaded all the time, you always keep your finger off your trigger guard until ready to fire, you know your target and you know what's behind it. Keep in mind what happened with Alec Baldwin. He shot someone and behind it he had another person. So you may be shooting a target and behind the target there's someone else. You have to know who's on the other side as well. This is huge and you do this no matter what you're doing. Even if you're using a dummy round you still apply these safety rules. When I do this with my rifle I'm still doing it in a safe direction using maybe a bookcase or some, uh, some piece of furniture that I know that a round is going to be going in there and not bouncing all around hurting someone else by accident. You take all the precautions even when using dummy rounds. If you fail at this, this is why it pisses me so much when I see some of these instructors that think it's fancy to have some guy you know sit right next to a target. Ah, oh, I'm such a good shot. I'm never gonna be hitting someone by accident. That is stupid, okay? That's simply the way it is. There's no other way of putting that any other way. So you still use the same safety rules no matter what you're using. Now when it comes to these blank rounds, the, the, the issue is that these have a primer and they have powder. This means that a lot of pressure is going to be created. What happened with uh, Brandon Lee, you probably heard about it. In that case, apparently a round, a projectile was, uh, not a round, a projectile was lodged in the barrel. By accident, previous use, someone didn't realize it when the armorer of that uh, TV, of that um, uh, film production uh, handled the gun, he loaded it with a blank gun, a, a blank round. Now the blank round still has a powder, the projectile is already on the barrel and with the amount of pressure it's going to be creating, it's going to be firing like a, you know, like a typical live round because you still have that projectile later on, you know, down range <laughs> within the barrel itself, all you need is to push it at very high speed, which this will definitely do. Keep in mind, it's the same mechanism used in, you know, for slaughtering um, livestock. You have a captive, that captive uh, piston is not going anywhere, staying in there, but it's pushed at such force that it goes into the skull of a cow, killing it. If you have a projectile, it's going to be firing just like a normal live round. And that's how Brandon Lee apparently died. 
In the case of, of Alec Baldwin, what happened was even worse than this. What happened with Alec Baldwin was that there was a, a very crappy production company involved, and they were doing lots of stupid stuff, mistreating their workers, and they hired someone they shouldn't have hired. This woman called uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed was the armorer in charge, and what this woman did apparently was take the guns she was using for the film and went firing with them, you know, nearby, near the, the, the where they were shooting the, the movie. She just took a few, you know, a, a little time off and went planking or trying the gun with live ammunition. She forgot about that live ammunition, came back, gave not a, a black powder gun, but a single action revolver to Alec Baldwin, which was loaded with live 45 cult ammunition. And uh, Alec Baldwin pulled it, you know, cocked the hammer, pulled the trigger on the gun. He ended up killing someone, injuring someone else that went through with one round being fired. That's how powerful 45 cult is. That's how powerful 9mm full metal jacket is as well. 9mm full metal jacket will go through two or three people. Wouldn't be the first time that it happens. Uh, and I actually know a, a, a friend of mine that actually, you know, a cop that shot someone, went through that guy, ended up killing someone innocent, you know, away, a, a huge distance away because of how powerful this is. You should never use this for self-defense. It just goes through people like paper. It's just has a lot of penetration. This is used for military purposes and you want to have that penetration in self-defense? No, that is simply not a good idea. Anyway, that's what apparently happened and I don't have all the information. This is apparently based on, this is based on what I've read so far, it makes perfect sense. So they hired a crappy armorer that shouldn't, and, and actually know a guy, a friend of mine is a, a, an armorer in different you know, movie productions and such. It, it's apparently not all that difficult. It's actually kind of easy. I don't know the, the kind of paperwork involved, but it's really not all that hard. If you get your, your, your papers done, pretty much anyone that's uh, interested in guns can get himself involved in this kind of business. And it's apparently good money, but this woman had no business doing this. She definitely had no, uh, no, no skill, no responsibility, no professional uh, attitude as to do this. You would never, ever take on, on the same trip, you know, on the same uh, thing you're doing, you would never take live ammunition and just screw around with live ammunition with the same gun you're planning on later handing over to an actor. That is just stupid amount of neglect. And th that's what happened. There was not that much involved. Can this still kill someone without a round? Yes, and it has happened more than once. People went and bought themselves, okay, give me a, 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 a box of, 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 um, of, of blanks in nine millimeter or in any other caliber, and they just think that being a blank, it's safe. No, they, there was a man that pressed, you know, joking around about it, he pressed uh, the gun against his head, pulled the trigger, and he ended up dying nonetheless. Why? Because of the amount of pressure that you have here, and especially when it's pushed against your head, there's no way for those gases to escape other than through your skull. It blew a hole in his head without any kind of projectile simply because of the amount of pressure involved here. Keep in mind, these are intended for slaughtering a livestock, just pushing that piston, but the pressure is still there. If you push this against your head, it may well put a hole in it, right? And even without it, if you're using this in a gun at a very close range, some uh, unburned powder is likely to end up going into, into the skin, eyes of someone else, you really shouldn't fire this at, at, at anyone, at any kind of close distance. You have to know what you're doing, you have to be very informed, know exactly what kind of powder you're gonna be using. I'm sure there's, spe there's a specialty ammunition specifically for movie sets, and you should know what you're doing. It's not just about buying a, a few blanks and making yourself the armorer of a movie production. This kind of neglect is how these people ended up dying, and folks, I'm doing this video so as to inform you guys of the risks of these two specifically. You know, these are the ones that people don't fully understand. Oh, no, it has no projectile, it's safe. No, it's not. The amount of pressure is huge. You have to make sure there's nothing lodged in the barrel. And even then, I wouldn't have this aimed at my face and fired. You know, you could easily use, lose an eye over this. So be safe, know what you're doing. And if you're going to be involved in the movie business, be absolutely certain you're professional about it and test everything you're doing so as to know the risk involved. Folks, it's going to be all for now. If you're interested in this sort of thing, Street Survival Skills, Modern Survival Man, Manual, bugging out and relocating are my books. Follow the links below. Take care.